Jesus prophesied that there would be three stages of abomination of desolation. Are we living at the final stage? Benjamin Netanyahu will introduce the Jewish Messiah and the building of the third temple. Is this really prophecy or fallacy? Hi friends, this is Brother Jericho for Truth and Bible Prophecy. Praying that you can like and share this video to friend. May you be enlightened in this Christ-centered presentation. This one is called the abomination of desolation. Matthew 24 verse 15 When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand Notice that the abomination of desolation could be seen by Christ's followers and that abomination of desolation was spoken of previously by the prophet Daniel and the abomination was to stand in the holy place What are the prophetic signs and stages of the abomination of desolation we must be careful in the final days for people will sensationalize unusual events and call it prophetic irismirror.ie sign of the apocalypse as hundreds of sheep mysteriously walk in circle for 10 days an eerie CCTV video showing hundreds of sheep marching in a circle has been hailed as a sign of the apocalypse. The huge herd reportedly stumped together for 10 days straight without a break. And some are calling it a sign of the near rapture. Another website says apocalypse. The internet is terrified after watching the video of sheep walking in a circle for 12 days straight. A Twitter user says that it is the sign of the abomination of desolation as saying, Repent, O ye sinners, for the hour of judgment is at hand. Others believe that on some sort of sign of unprecedented danger, a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, but friends, this is neither prophetic nor the abomination of desolation spoken by Jesus Christ. Another is Jewish rabbi claim that Benjamin Netanyahu winning the Israeli election is a sign that he will usher in the Jewish Messiah on November 2022. Israel365news.com Netanyahu will hand scepter to Messiah, son of David. The Shem M. Shuel discusses the Jewish tradition of a two-stage process for Messiah. The first stage referred to as Moshiach ben Yosef. The second stage is a miraculous process which includes the re-establishment of the Davidic dynasty and the completion of the third temple. The Jews believe that this prophecy had been fulfilling about the coming of the Jewish Messiah, a Messiah that is not Jesus Christ. The Bible does not teach a future Antichrist sitting on a third temple. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And the Jewish nation will force their man-made Messiah. This is a clear path in receiving the mark of the beast. Some teach that this prophecy, the abomination of desolation, was fulfilled when Antiochus Epiphanes interrupted the temple sacrifices between 168 and 165 BC. The abomination they point to is the pig Antiochus had offered on the altar in the temple complex. Others believe the abomination of desolation refers to a future time when an atheistic antichrist will overthrow the temple in Jerusalem and use it as his throne. Then there are those who believe the abomination of desolation is the Roman standards which were worshipped in Jerusalem in 70 AD at the time of its destruction by Titus. But none of these interpretations are correct. Why? Because Jesus tells us that our study of the abomination of desolation should focus on the book of Daniel. But what is specifically the signs and the stages of the abomination of desolation? Here are the three stages of the abomination of desolation. First stage, abomination in the holy place, Jerusalem's captivity. The key that unlocks the mystery of this prophetic event is found in the two verses of Daniel. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, 
king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. During the time King Joachim reigned as vassal of Babylon, the prophet Jeremiah preached in Jerusalem. God's message was that Babylonian invasion was God's punishment for Judah's sin and that the Hebrews should repent. Joachim called for Jeremiah's scroll to be read in his court, but as every three or four columns of the scroll were read, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot until the entire scroll was burned. It was specifically the abominations of King Joachim that led him and his city to forfeit God's protection and thus fall to Nebuchadnezzar. These abominations were standing in God's consecrated holy place, the house of the Lord. The religious leaders of the day had purposefully led the people to adopt heathen worship practices and incorporated them into their worship of God. The people rejected God's calls to repentance and reformation and were left to reap the consequences. Second stage, the Jews reject the real Messiah, Jesus. This desolation of Jerusalem was prophesied by Daniel to come as a result of the people rejecting Messiah the Prince. Daniel chapter 9, 25-27 to Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. Verse 26, And after sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Verse 27, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. In verse 25, Messiah is promised to Israel and the city's restoration is also predicted. But then ominously, all is prophesied for doom again. Verse 26 speaks of Messiah being killed by his own people and how this act would cause their city and sanctuary to be desolated once again. God is not orchestrating Netanyahu's revelation of a coming Messiah. God showed us from prophecy that this is an abomination, rejecting Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus placed the guilt upon the people by stating they knew not the time of their visitation. As a result of not responding to God's call to turn from their abominations, their temple was to be desolated. This prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD when the Roman armies of Titus burned the temple to the ground. The second desolation of the temple perfectly paralleled its first destruction. On both occasions, the abominations were done by the apostate people of God. And the desolation was an act of judgment performed by a heathen army. This desolation of Jerusalem was prophesied by Daniel to come as a result of rejecting the Messiah, the Prince. Because Israel rejected the Messiah, they lost their place as God's favored people. Jesus predicted this will take place by saying, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Matthew 21 verse 43 The final stage of abomination, the mark of the beast. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Discerning students of prophecy, history, realize that these verses predict the formation and ascension of the power by the papacy. It is an undisputable fact of history that the papacy brought into the Christian church. The very same practices of paganism for which ancient Jerusalem was destroyed. One has to do only a little study to see how image worship, Tammuz worship, Sunday sacredness were introduced to Christianity during the Dark Ages. Most Protestant churches accede to the apostasy by continuing the practice of abominations that had their roots firmly fixed in ancient pagan religions, which were established to destroy God's truth. Both Catholicism and Protestantism have fostered abominations in God's holy place, His Church. facile per me a rispondere, soprattutto davanti a un teologo come il Cardinal Casper. <laughs> Ho paura! <laughs> È vero che in, in certo senso 
condividere e, e dire che non ci sono differenze tra noi, che abbiamo la stessa dottrina, sottolineo la parola, parola difficile da capire, ma non abbiamo lo stesso battesimo. The sign that will show this nation has filled its cup of iniquity will be when it makes an image to the papacy by uniting church and state. How much more neatly could this be effected than by the passage of a National Sunday Law commanding everyone to worship to honor a pagan day of worship, the mark of the beast? The opposite of abomination is sanctification choosing to live holy lives for Christ. Will you take that first step in surrendering your life to Jesus and all of those things shall be added unto you? Kindly type in the comment section, I am a follower of Jesus. Grow in grace, friend, and may we all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.